Dave, would you grab some milk at the store? Nice cameras, but where's the milk? Hey everybody, this is Dave Dugdale, learningdslrvideo.com. I got the Canon 5D Mark III and the Nikon D800 in for review to compare against each other. And one of the first tests I wanted to do was kind of a fun low light test. So. All the garage scenes that you saw were done on the 5D Mark III and the time lapse was done on the D100. And basically what I did is I took a tripod and I put it kind of in the back seat of our minivan, set the camera on the tripod and did interval shooting and created this time lapse. So basically I used um, an ISO of 100, an f-stop of 3.2 and a shutter speed of 0.4 seconds. And I just basically focused uh, way out in front of the car to get the correct focus. Now you'll see this if you look at an individual file of the time lapse it looks a little jittery but you need that kind of um, motion blur to create a uh, smooth video smooth looking video at 24 frames per second. So going into the menu system on the Nikon I went to the shooting menu then the interval timer shooting selection. I then picked one second for my interval. The manual here shows one minute, but I basically put a zero where the minute is, and I, off to the right, I put a one in the right-hand column. And then I went and pressed start and pressed the OK button. Before I started to drive, I wanted to see if the buffer could handle the raw images being sent to my SD card, and it couldn't. After about 10 shots, even with a second interval between them, about after 10, it just kind of gave up. So it basically what I had to do is lower the resolution way down as a JPEG. Um, I still kept the, uh, the compression of the JPEG very high, but I just brought down the file size to be a lot smaller. And it was still a lot larger than my 1080p video that I was creating. So there's many different ways you can do time lapse. But one of my favorite and the one I'm going to be showing you now is using After Effects for post-processing. So let's get started. All right, after I open After Effects, I double click on this pane right here in the project window, and I go to the folder of where I stored all of the sequenced images. And I just basically, if you'll notice down here, there's nothing highlighted, but as soon as I click on the very first one in the folder, and that's all there is, all these are in that one folder, nothing else is in that folder, you'll see a JPEG sequence uh, appear. Click that, click Open, only takes a second. Then I right click and I go to interpret footage, main, and then I make sure that it's at 24 frames per second because that's what I'm gonna be using when I go into Premiere Pro later. And then I go down here to where it says 8-bit color space, I believe, <clears throat> and then I change that to 32-bit. 
Then I drag this down into this lower pane right here. Then I go to Composition, Composition Settings, and I choose this one, HDTV 1080 24, which is 24 frames. And I say OK. Then I twirled down till I get to where it says scale, and then I decrease the scale to where it fits. Let's go ahead and fit, pick a uh, frame after I started the driving. There's a good one. And you'll see if you have it at 100, it's too big. But if I bring it down to about right here, that looks good. And you got notice I got some lens flare going on up here at the top. So what I'm going to do is drag this down and frame that a little better. And you can see that I've got dashboards pretty much taking half of it, which I think looks pretty cool. Then if we decrease this down to 25%, um, you can see that where exactly the outline of it is. If you wanted to, you could always um, pan and scan around because I have a larger image than I do um, in terms of where you know the final output is going to be, but I'm not going to do it in this case. Then I go up to Composition, uh, Add to Render Queue, and right here under Output Module, I click on the here. And since I'm a Windows machine, I usually choose AVI, and I unclick audio, and then I'm ready to go, and I just click render. So that's pretty much it. I want to make a big shout out to Alan Morris. Uh, he created a video a while back called Night Drive, and I pretty much blatantly copied his format. Um, and he was really nice, not only providing me inspiration for the video, but he was really nice answering my emails and giving me tips on how to get started. Um, doing this type of time lapse at night inside your car. So a big shout out to him and I, and I learned a lot from repeating his steps. Um, my next videos will be a lot more creative and not so much copying, but um, big shout out to Alan. And also, if you haven't got a chance, definitely head over to my website, learningdslrvideo.com. I've got three bonus videos, one of them of which is the top seven ways to get tack sharp video with your DSLR. So definitely head over and sign up. Just put your email address and you'll pretty much get those instantly. And we will talk to you guys later. All right, bye.